Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to Port Glasgow New Parish Church. Uh, it's great to see you all here today. Uh, it's so good to look out and actually see a congregation. Um, I've been so used to recently looking at a laptop screen and a camera, so uh, it's actually so good to actually look out and see some faces. It almost feels like we're getting back to, not quite normal, but we're getting back to some sort of normality. The fact that we can be here uh, with each other is also good. Um, also to say hello to all of our friends who are watching online. Uh, we have our online community watching uh, live on Facebook and then it's recorded and will be seen again um, on YouTube. So a big welcome to all of you as well. So if you're here in person or if you are watching us online, you are most welcome here. Uh, welcome to Port Glasgow New Parish Church. So if you see me looking up sometimes, it's because I'm looking up to our congregation who are watching us online. Um, last week, our service on Facebook was viewed about 1,400 times. So, I mean, whether that's people who've watched the whole thing, but in a way, it's great because even if they just tuned in to watch some of it, um, it's good. The more, the merrier, and they might think, well, actually, I want to come back and watch a wee bit more. So 1,400 on uh, Facebook and just over 400 on YouTube. So that's absolutely fantastic. I know since this all began, we've had a lot of new people watching with us online. Um, some people who've moved to the area or some people who've found us through other means. So um, a big welcome to everyone who's watching us online. Um, for the congregation here, uh, just to let you know, I think you'll have seen from last week that the camera will not suddenly just zoom in on your face. Um, I know there was a few concerns about that, but um, it's not like songs of praise. Don't worry. Um, they won't just suddenly uh, zoom around and zoom right into your face. Um, I think if you've seen from last week, most of the camera angles come from there, from here, and from the pulpit. So welcome everyone to our service here today. Welcome back to those of you who are here with us this morning. A few intimations before we begin. So just a reminder that if you're coming again next week, uh, you do have to book in again. So you would phone Francis on the Saturday between 9 and 12. So while these restrictions remain in place, um, you do have to book in to come to church. Um, I never ever thought I'd have to say that, uh, but unfortunately you have to book in at the moment. And also, just yeah, really important, remember if you have symptoms of um, COVID-19, to please make sure that you don't come to church. Um, this Wednesday, we'll open the church if you'd like to hand in your knitted poppies. So if you remember, we're having a remembrance display out on the front fence, and I think that's going to look fantastic. So thank you to those of you who have knitted your poppies already. And if you have some, then please, you can hand them in this Wednesday between 10 and 12. To all of the children, to all the children that are watching, um, we'll have drawings as well because I thought Remembrance is going to be different this year. So I've put on some um, a drawings and outlines onto the Facebook page. I'll do that again today. And a bit like the rainbow, if you remember as we started this lockdown, if you want to stick your coloured poppies into your window. Um, this year, the Cenotaph services at the moment, um, at the moment are cancelled, um, again because of coronavirus. So it is going to be different this year for Remembrance. Um, we will have church services here as we have today and of course online, but we won't have you know, things like the band, for example. Um, so at the moment, the Cenotaph services are cancelled, but we'll keep you updated uh, if it changes. But I think if it does change, it will be very small. So it will literally be um, you know, representatives from, for example, Church of Scotland, police, fire. Um, but these decisions have been made by Inverclyde Council and Police Scotland, and we, of course, respect the, the decisions that they make. And the last one is with regards to Treasurer. So um, Carol has announced that um, she will stand down as our Treasurer, and we want to thank Carol for everything that she has done for our congregation as Treasurer, um, because there's a lot of work involved in doing that. Um, but Carol has um, kindly agreed that she will stand down, um, she was going to stand down this year, but she's agreed that she will stand down next year, um, at the end of next year, December 2021, and that's simply to allow us time to find a treasurer. Um, so it's to find someone who um, can work alongside Carol. So if you would like or are interested in becoming a treasurer in our congregation, then please speak to myself or to Carol. Um, even if you're just interested, and it will give you enough time and enough opportunity to work alongside Carol. Um, and she'll obviously um, work alongside you and train you in that new role. So we are looking for a new treasurer. So if you think you might be interested, then please do um, let us know. 
These then are all of the intimations for this morning. This morning we explore the greatest commandment which we hear in the book of Matthew. Love God and love your neighbour. There were more than 600 commandments in the Jewish law and it was often asked which of these had priority over others. In answering the question, Jesus gives not one but two commandments. Love your God with all your heart and soul and love your neighbour as yourself. Both of these answers are taken from the law of Moses. So let us explore this, this more as we begin our time of worship together, beginning with our call to worship. Our hearts are lifted up towards God, the God created all that is. We celebrate that great love of God, the God that gifted us with his Son, Jesus Christ. Let us rejoice and be glad today. Let us come together as one united congregation, here in person or online, to worship God. We begin our service today, and for those of you who are here today, again because of restrictions, we have to listen to the hymns rather than sing them. Um, Again, that's another restriction. I know it's hard, but um, we have to listen. If you're online, you can, of course, sing along in your living room if you like. Um, But we begin our uh, service with our first hymn. I think appropriate as we're all back together today, let us build a house where love can dwell. All are welcome in this place.
that will uh, take some time to get used to. <laughs> um, obviously, we're so used to standing up and belting out all the hymns, especially that one. I quite like that one, but um, it will take time to get used to. I know it's different, but uh, hopefully it won't be for too long. So. so let us now join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather here this morning to show our love and our care for you. You revealed the depths of your love by sending Jesus into the world. We delight to know him and are glad to follow him. Together we are called to help others discover your love and guide them in the ways of Jesus. Forgive us for the times when we allow our emotions to get in the way. Our emotions to get in the way of loving others as we should. Forgive us for the times when we fail to create hospitality or welcome for strangers. Remind us today of how Jesus showed his love for all people and help us to follow his example. Fill us so full of love that it pours out freely from us and extends to all people that we meet. We long to see your love fill our world, for it to flow freely from all and to all people. Help us to make it so. Gracious God, we rejoice in the wonder of your love and your constant care. We gratefully respond in joyful worship and heartfelt thanksgiving. Lord, hear us now as we praise you, saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And to all of our Sunday Club. If you're watching, it's great that you've uh, joined us. Um, Today is different again because I've got a congregation in front of me, which is fantastic, and hopefully it won't be too long until we see you all soon. Now, the way we always begin our Sunday Club talks, of course, is we also we have our virtual high five or our virtual fist bump. Adults, please feel free; you can join in. It's all virtual. We don't have to touch each other's hands or anything. So. Um, and we do this because normally if you were here I would say to you let's have a high five or let's have a fist bump but unfortunately we're not able to do that at the moment so I think what we'll do today is we'll have a virtual high five shall we do that okay so if you hold out your arm like this okay and then after three we do this right so hold out your arm like this and then after three one two three (laughs) there we go a virtual Uh, high five. So it's great that you have joined us, it's great that you've been joining us um, right throughout this time of restrictions and lockdown and of course you're back at school this week and I certainly miss hearing your stories when you're here about how your week has been. Um, It does feel strange uh, talking to a camera but I'm sure that you had a great time off and you got up to lots of fun. Now in school of course as we know there are always rules to abide by Um, I was in our Gown Primary School and in the corridor there's a sign and it says this is the quiet zone. So when you go into the corridor that is the quiet zone. It's the zone where you make absolutely no noise whatsoever so not to disturb all of the other classes. And I'm sure you can think of many other rules that you get within school. Perhaps no running in the playground is one of them. If you work, so when you go into the workplace there's still loads of rules. There's rules here at church as well. So, for example, if you look at one of the doors through there, it says it's an emergency exit only. So that's a rule. You only use it in an emergency. So thinking lots about rules, whether it be in school, whether it be in the workplace, whether it be in church, there's rules all over the place. Um, For example, I drove here today. Um, I know, very lazy. I only live up the hill. But I drove here today, and there's traffic lights. And, of course, they have rules as well because it says you cannot go through a red traffic light. Now that's a really important rule because if we ignored that rule then can you imagine what would happen? So it's really important that we have rules of the road for example. And today we're thinking about 
rules. Um, but in the Bible, it says commandments, so commands. And we are going to look at um, Matthew today. And in Matthew, it's called the greatest commandment. So Jesus is asked, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replies, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. So that's the first commandment, the first rule. So as we know, God loves all of us and we are in turn asked to love God back. And for example, that's why everyone is here today. That's why you're watching online. That's why, for example, you read your Bible because God loves us and we are asked in turn to love God back. And then the second, he said, this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like this, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, when we hear this, love your neighbor, it may sound like we have to love our next door neighbor and that's it. But what it means, our neighbor is everyone that God places in front of us. So everyone that's here today, yes, your next door neighbor, everyone that's in your class at school, um, everyone who's perhaps in your boys brigade or girls brigade or dancing club, it's everyone that God places in front of us. So today we're thinking of rules, commandments, and the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So we've been asked to love God, who we know loves us, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And we've been thinking about that a lot. How do we show love to others? And one of the things we did as a congregation, we donated 80 bags of food to the local food bank with 200 pounds. So for example, that's showing love to other people within our town who are perhaps struggling at the moment. So this is the commandment that's given to us. Um, Jesus says, love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor. And it's really important to remember this. So what I've done in my Bible is I've used a pink highlighter pen and I've highlighted those two commandments. And what I thought you could do today, a bit of craft for you. Now here's one that I made earlier. I've always wanted to say that. So here we have a love heart and on there it says love God and then I have another one that says love neighbor. So you might want to do this today. This might be some craft for you today or tomorrow or whenever you've got time. And what to do is get a sheet of paper. Now what I did was I got a red bit of paper because I'm a bit lazy. Um, it would have meant I had to color it in if I got white. So, but if you want to color it in, you can do if you get a white bit of paper or card and then cut out love hearts. All right, and then on one love heart you put love God and then on the other you put love neighbor and then what I want you to do is put that somewhere so perhaps it's on the fridge perhaps it's in your room somewhere that you'll always see it and it will remind you of that greatest commandment to love God and to love neighbor you might actually want to do another one and it might just say the greatest commandment so it'll say the greatest commandment love God and love your neighbor so I am going to place this here this morning to remind me <clears throat> I'll place it behind me so love God and love our neighbour and that's what we're going to think about today and we're going to hear from the Bible and it's very special this morning because we have a brand new Bible um, so I get to do something very special today I get to dedicate a new Bible and I'm going to say a wee bit about that in just a few moments so that might be something that you want to do cut out a heart, love God because God loves us and love your neighbor. So everyone that God places in front of us, your family, your friends, people in school, people you see on the street. Now, we are going to sing, well, we can't in church unfortunately, but if you want to do the actions, please feel free. Um, we're going to listen to our next children's video and hopefully this works because we've had a few technical issues. Um, and this is called Peace Like a River. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've 
Excellent. I do love that song. Um, I do need to learn the actions for that though. So Now, we come to a very special part um, of our service because um, we have been very kindly gifted um, a brand new lectern Bible. Um, this has been given to us by um, Donnie McDonald, who is on the front row here. So we want to say how much we really appreciate this very kind gift. Um, this is the NIV Bible. This is the version of the Bible that I use. And this is our new lectern Bible. And obviously, I'll try and lift that up. But it is a beautiful build, uh, Bible. Uh, it's also got, you might be able to see that there a wee bit, but um, the sort of gold outline as well, like this. So it's absolutely beautiful. And I want to say a huge big thank you to Donnie because it's a very kind gift for us as a congregation. Um, now, are we allowed to clap hands? Is that one of the rooms? Yep, we can do. Yep. <laughs> Wasn't sure. <clears throat> Wasn't sure if that was one of the other restrictions, who knows. But, um, but yeah, we want to say a big thank you very much for this uh, kind gift. It's very much appreciated. Um, if you can imagine how long this will be here, how many people will read the Word of God from these pages. Um, it will be in use every single week. Um, also, another great way to think about it, a way I was thinking about it, was the fact that this is going to be here for years and years to come. There will be people that aren't even born yet who will come to this church and will hear the Word of God read from this very Bible. So it is a very, very thoughtful gift, and we really very much appreciate it. So thank you on behalf of all of the congregation here. So what I'm going to do today is dedicate our Bible, and the first thing, of course, to do is to read from our new Bible. So this is from Luke chapter 11, reading verses 28. So Luke chapter 11, reading verses 28. Happy are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So very short, but very important. Happy are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So now let us join our hearts together in prayer as we dedicate our new Bible. Let us pray. Almighty God, you enlighten the minds of your servants with the knowledge of your truth. Illumine our minds by the clear shining of your spirit and lead us to the brightness of your Son, the Word made flesh, full of grace and truth. Grant that your Word, proclaimed here from this Bible, may not return to you empty without accomplishing its purpose and succeeding in the task for which you sent it, that those who speak and those who listen may know you more truly and love you more dearly. Blessed God, you caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, that by patience and comfort of your word, we might embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life. Set your blessing upon this Bible, from which your holy word will be read. Bring to life the written word by the power of him who reveals your loving nature, calls your people to holiness, and offers them new life in the gospel of his grace. Even Jesus Christ, the word of life himself, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we come to our scripture reading for this morning from our new Bible, which comes from Matthew 22, reading from verses 34 to 46. Matthew chapter 22, reading from verses 34 to 46. And it's entitled, The Greatest Commandment. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, 
Jesus asked them, what do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, how is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Amen and thanks be to God for the reading of his holy word. We now listen to our next hymn this morning. Our next hymn is Give Me Joy in My Heart. now we come to our prayers for ourselves and for others and as always within this prayer there will be a moment of silence and that moment of silence is there for your own personal prayers perhaps there's something going on in your own life at the moment or in the lives of someone you know and love whatever it may be there will be a moment of silence at the end of today's prayer let us join our hearts together in prayer let us pray Loving God, in prayer you walk us to the highest point from which we are offered an opportunity to view the world as you see it and the world as you wish it to be. There is much to be thankful for, for we enjoy opportunities of good health, times of relaxation, times to work, a roof over our heads, opportunities to feed ourselves our imaginations and the aching of our hearts. From your vantage point we praise you for all that is good for us and allow you to draw our eyes from our concerns to those of our neighbours, our community and our world. In prayers our eyes are drawn to those that we know who are in need in our community, both here in church and in the parish of which we are part. Help us not to be afraid of what is different or unknown to us, but instead willing to offer friendship and accept the opportunities to grow in knowledge and experience. Our eyes are drawn to places of hunger and need. Teach us to share our resources and enable us through the activity of your spirit, in prayer and with action, 
to be part of a creation where all are treated fairly and all have enough to eat. As you, Lord of vision, draw our eye back to the world of which we are part, may our lives be shaped by you to offer others a vision of your love shown in our faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, in a moment of silence, we pray to you our own personal prayers for those this week who are on our hearts and on our minds. Loving God, hear these our prayers, for we ask them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. We now uh, hear our next hymn this morning. Our next hymn is There is a Redeemer. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord, our Saviour and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning we explore the greatest commandment, to love God and to love our neighbour. Before we begin by exploring this morning's reading, I want to explore how we got to this point. 
The point where Jesus is asked the question, what is the greatest commandment? Well, if you go back to chapter 21, it is here that the temple rulers challenge Jesus' authority to teach in its courts and throw out the money changers. It's in this chapter that Jesus meets that challenge by telling the parable of the two sons, insulting the religious leaders with the news that people like tax collectors will enter the kingdom of God ahead of the scribes and the temple rulers. It's in this chapter that Jesus then tells the parable of the wicked tenants, further accusing the chief priests and Pharisees of rejecting him as God's anointed one. It of course makes them mad, but they are afraid of the people, so they do not arrest him. Instead, they conspire to trap him. Jesus in turn responds to their anger with the parable of the wedding banquet in chapter 22. A really difficult story. Jesus tells his opponents, since you have rejected God's chosen Messiah, others will be invited to participate in the kingdom of God in your place. But even they must commit fully to faith in Christ to be included. And then, of course, we have an awkward alliance between the disciples of the Pharisees and the Herodians. They try to trap Jesus into revealing himself as either a traitor to God or a traitor to Rome, certain that whatever way he answers the riddle about paying taxes, he will say something worth getting arrested. Of course, they run the risk of causing a riot by setting Jesus up in this way. But Jesus slips through the trap by turning their political questions into a spiritual one. If you remember, he says this. He says, so give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. So that is what has happened just before Jesus is asked the question that we heard this morning. Jesus has interacted with temple rulers, Pharisees, disciples of Pharisees, Herodians, and Sadducees. In every instance, Jesus astonishes his listeners. Now the Pharisees are back for one last attempt to trick Jesus into saying something that will justify arresting him. Now of course, naturally, it's a lawyer who comes up with the ultimate question. When the lawyer hears that the Sadducees were silenced by Jesus, it's then that he poses the question. It is a question based in the law. His question is revealing. He seeks to rank the commandments of God. Teacher, he says, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus explains firstly that we should love God, that God is our God, the one God. We are brothers and sisters together living in a relationship with him, the creator of all things, the God deserving of worship and of praise. And he says that we should love our neighbours as ourselves. Each of us are called to proclaim love through word and deed. Caring for those who are sick, helping those in need, rejoicing with those who rejoice, mourning with those who mourn. But always praying that we will have the opportunity to share Christ with them, to tell them the good news and invite them into a relationship with the loving God. The loving God and the living God who is the way, the truth, and the life. What we hear today about our love for God is actually extremely rare to read in the New Testament. Because normally, of course, we read in the Bible about God's love for each one of us. So because it's rare for the New Testament writers to mention our love for God, when they do, that's why we should recognize the importance of this statement. That command that we shall love our neighbor. I wonder how many of us struggle with this commandment. Love your neighbor. In this statement, the command to love our neighbor isn't just about loving those who share the same faith as us, or who share our interests, or who are similar to us. The command to love our neighbor means to love those who God places right in front of us. People we might normally try to avoid, 
People who might perhaps annoy us or upset us for various reasons. People who might not even like us. But despite that, Jesus calls on us to love our neighbour. By far, if we are honest, the hardest thing to do. But it is what is asked of all of us. During this time of coronavirus health emergency, we have seen many examples of love your neighbour. As communities stepped up to help others, handing out hot meals, collecting prescriptions, topping up the food bank, just to name a few. As I have said many times before, that love for others needs to be a big priority for us as a church. How do we connect with the parish that surrounds this building right here at the heart of Port Glasgow? How do we meet the need, for example, of those in our community, in our parish, who are struggling with mental health, drug addiction, struggling financially? How do we become that beacon of hope for those who need it? Seen as a church community with love at its core, a building seen not just as part of history, opened a long time ago, but a place where people feel welcomed, loved, cared for. A place where they can look at and feel that I belong here. Yes, of course, we have building restrictions at the moment like everyone else, but rather than simply talk about it, let all of us get our heads together. Any idea or suggestion welcome and how we become a church with love and mission as its core. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love is the very definition of the Christian faith. It is the heartbeat of what it means for us to follow Jesus. A love that is mission orientated. A love that is demanding. A love that is inclusive of all people. A love that is self-accepting. We need to pray for ourselves and each other that we can grow in love and so reflect the ministry of Jesus in our own lives throughout this church and throughout our community. Glory be to the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> At this moment in the service, we would normally accept our offering and you would have seen the basket um, as you came in. And for the moment, that's the way it will be when you come to church. There'll be a basket at the front door for um, your offering. And I'll pray over that basket in just a few moments. Um, just to remind you that, of course, if you're coming to church next week um, to do exactly that, you can bring along your offering and at the front door there'll be a basket. Um, you can also sign up for standing order. And I know some people have done that um, during this time of lockdown. Um, also, just to say that, of course, every year we um, receive envelopes. And I know some of you have envelopes and you'll fill up your envelopes and you'll bring them to church. Now I know um, some people have signed up to standing order. So if you can let Carol know if you're going to continue with your standing order. Or if next year you would like to go back to envelopes. So if you can let her know as soon as possible that would be great. So if you've signed up for standing order and you want to just keep it that way. Then that's absolutely fine. But if you've signed up for standing order and you just did it for part of this health emergency and during these restrictions and you'd quite like to go back to envelopes again next year if you can please let Carol know as soon as possible that would be great and you can also donate using the Church of Scotland website and if you like you can also send a check to our treasurer so there are many ways at the moment as we go through this time of lockdown and restrictions um, that you can donate to the church and we very much appreciate it thank you for that so let us now pray for our offering today Let us pray. Loving God, we bring our offering to you this morning for the work of your church here in Port Glasgow and for the work of the Church of Scotland nationally 
and throughout the world. We bring this, these gifts in adoration. We bring them in praise, gratitude and love. For all you have given us, all you will give us, and all you give us here and now, we offer you our thanks and our praise. All of this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we bring our service to a close this morning, and I want to thank each and every one of you for coming here today. Um, I appreciate that it's different. It's different from when you were perhaps last in church. Hopefully it won't be too long, but we just never know. But it is so good to see you all here today. It's good to have a congregation here in front of me today. And also to those of you who have watched us online, thank you very much for watching us too. Everyone is welcome here, whether you're here in person or whether you're watching us online. So we close our service this morning. We close with the hymn, Lord of All Hopefulness. Go to serve God and his people. Go to follow Christ's example in loving God, self and neighbour. Go with the Holy Spirit to change the world with love. And as you do, God's love goes with you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and those whom you share life's journey with. This day and forevermore.